Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel for another video. Today I wanted to sit down with you guys and give you five of my best tips for using BJU Press homeschool materials in your homeschool. I've been using materials from BJU with my older kids in our homeschool for the last going on three years. And I finally, finally, finally feel like I have mastered the ability to use their resources and have them fit in with our homeschool life, our time off, our travel. It can get really difficult and I'm going to touch on why in a second here. Um, but this video is just meant for you guys who are coming behind me, maybe trying BJU Press homeschool materials for the first time in your homeschool and you're probably going to feel like, oh my gosh, how are we even going to take a day off in our homeschool? There's so many lessons. Um, and so I want to share with you guys ways that I have found to keep it manageable in our homeschool and why I choose to use their materials, even if it does cause me a little bit of like stress just at the sheer volume of information there. So I hope that this video is helpful for any of you guys who are watching, wondering, coming behind me. And so I'm just going to give you my quick five tips, not really going into too much of why we choose BJU when there's other curriculums and things like that. I'm not going into that in this video, but we've used them for three years for foreign language and science specifically in my homeschool and so obviously we really like it. So I hope these tips are helpful. Make sure you guys leave me a comment and let me know at the end of the video if you have any tips that you would also like to add to this if you are a fellow BJU user as well as um, if any of these were helpful for you. I would love to hear from you guys with a comment down below. All right, so really quick off the top, you might be wondering, well, what's the big deal? You just do one lesson each day and you're good to go. Well, BJU Press Homeschool, um, the lessons are formulated on a five-day school week for 180 total days of um, that complete the course. It's formulated that way because in most states, especially states with high homeschooling regulation, that is the number of days your children need to complete for their school year um, for it to be counted. Um, that's also the number of days that public school children go to school. And so um, 180 days is kind of like just the blanket uniformed. That's how many days that are in a school year. Now, as homeschoolers, of course, we have the freedom to take away from that or stick with that or exceed that. You know, I personally feel like I homeschool 365 days a year. It just depends on what we're doing, right? What we're doing varies. But BJU's courses are formatted on a 180 day schedule. Now, when you purchase the distance learning um, option, which is what we use, it's where the video courses are online. So I'm not teaching the materials to my high schoolers. They are watching a video um, that we are able to progress through that at our own pace. It's not a live class. However, um, they give you 18 months to finish the course from the time that you start it. So you could obviously take it longer if you're the type that lets one homeschool year roll into another. You could do with it what you will. You can skip what you want. You can do whatever you want. Um, I just want to say that. However, I think the most of us that choose BJU for our homeschoolers and especially our high school aged homeschoolers choose it because it is incredibly thorough. It is academically rigorous. It is challenging in the best ways. It is very preparatory for future education endeavors that our kids might go on to. Uh, the courses are chock full of goodness and information. And I know personally, there's nothing in these courses that I want to take away for the sake of making it easier for us to get through the course in a school year. So when I first tried their courses, I was very overwhelmed because we were coming from doing a four day week school week. Um, that's the way that I had always done it. It worked out so well when my kids were younger and I am a huge advocate and still to this day recommend it. 
And so when we moved to BJU, I just thought, well, there's no way that they're going to be able to do this course in a school year, especially if I'm consistently doing a four day a week school week. So what I was doing was having them do their other courses that have a different number of lessons those four days, but really aiming to do BJU five days a week since that's the way it was formatted. And it worked okay, but it was difficult to keep up with when we would take time off in our school year. Um, for example, the Good and the Beautiful's curriculum is 120 days. So there's about a 60 day difference there that was presenting challenges in my homeschool because I would have my younger kids finishing stuff. I would have my older kids needing extra days beyond what we were doing. And it was just difficult that first year to figure out how this is all going to work, which is why I'm talking about this now. So after the first year, uh, I I came back and I said, okay, I now I know we have to do BJU five days a week. We have to, otherwise we will, this course will take like 15 months to get through. And that was just not it. Um, so the second year we used BJU, BJU, we did a lot better. And what I did was I tried to double up lessons on some days and it worked better, but I still didn't want to do that all the time. So finally this year, this school year that I am wrapping up, I have found the ideal scenario for BJU for my house and my homeschool. This has worked so well. For the first time since I tried using BJU Press materials, my older kids and my younger kids are going to be finishing up around the same time. Um, we, we never did doubling up lessons. Everyone just did one per day. And so I'm going to give you guys the five things that I did that made that possible because we still were taking a fun Friday on Fridays with our school day being shorter. My high schoolers also getting that shorter day on Friday that they really enjoyed. Um, not to say that they don't enjoy their full school days, but you know, it's just nice when you get to the end of the week to have a little bit of a breather. And so they were still doing that, even using BJU. So I have them in my phone because I knew that I would forget. So my five tips for using BJU with 180 lessons and not skipping over any of them because I didn't want to do that, nor did my kids, and making it work in your homeschool so you can still take time off, you don't feel that pressure or that crunch at the end of the year, is to make sure you're doing BJU daily. Um, so for example, on Fun Fridays, they do their BJU. They don't do anything else, but they do that BJU because the, the course, each course takes about 30 to 45 minutes and it does need to be done five days a week when we are home and not on vacation or on a break. And so making sure that they stick with doing BJU daily has been huge. If we take a day off of school for a doctor's appointment or just errands or just because I have I'm tired, you know, things come up in life they still will sit down and do BJU. So my older kids were very disciplined when it came to doing their BJU courses on my recommendation, and it really, really helped. So doing daily BJU is very important. Um, the next thing is combining your practice tests with your test days. So they list them in the course as separate things. Um, and sometimes on separate days, depending what course you're doing. So I always have my kids do the practice test and as long as they do okay and they review their answers or the mistakes that they made, then I will have them automatically right after that take the, um, the test or the chapter test that they need to do. So then that also is kind of taking two days and combining it into one. And that really helped this year. Um, in the biology course, there's something with a standardized test. It's like practice for standardized testing. And I would have them also do that. So combining practice test and test day into one really, really helped. Um, and that is my other tip for you guys. Um, the, the next suggestion I have on making it work really well is to uh, work ahead when you know that you're going to um, need to take a day off 
and you're not traveling or something like that. So for example, if we're going to have like a, a hiking day, um, when it worked and we didn't do this all the time, but just doing it a few times does help at the end of the year when you don't want to feel that crunch, like everyone's finishing and we still have so many lessons to do. Um, so if we were going to take a nature day or we were going to be out of the house or whatever, the day before that, I would have them, uh, work ahead. So I wasn't doing double lessons every single day. Like I had to towards the end of last year because I wanted them to finish all together. Uh, but doing that those few times also, so really um, helped when it came time to take a long break, which leads me into my last tip. So I really wrestled with this because, um, you know, it's just everyone's homeschooling is different and everyone's expectation is different. However, I do think that at the high school level there, it is okay and permissible to have a different expectation of your high schoolers course load versus like your fifth grader in my situation this year. So I had a little bit of mom guilt about um, when I would take a home, a break from school um, at, and we weren't traveling, we were just home, whether it was just, uh, you know, we had been schooling for eight or nine weeks consistently, everyone's due for a week off. Uh, I would do that, but I would have my high schoolers do their BJU courses even when we were on a break um, at home. Now, when we were on vacation, no. When we took winter break for Christmas, no. When we took spring break and we were just traveling, no. But if we were just having a few days off at home because it was just time for me to take a few days off, BJU, I'm not teaching, so it's not uh, teacher intensive on me, so I was still able to kind of get that mental reprieve that I needed, and my high schoolers were fine with taking literally one hour in their mornings before they have the whole day free to keep up on their BJU, and we did that anytime we were taking a break at home with the exception of like Christmas break and spring break and things like that. And it worked really, really well. And everyone was happy. So that is like what I've done. And now at the end of this school year, we will have them, my high schoolers finishing their 180 day BJU courses, almost in simultaneous completion with my younger kids, whose most of their stuff is 120 days. That's generally like curriculums are either 180 or 120. And um, of course, you have the freedom as the homeschooler to take out what you want, skip over things if you want, but that just is not what I want and it's also not what my high schoolers want. They know that they're skipping something and they don't like that. They know that they didn't finish it in their own minds and they don't like that. So this video is meant for those of you who are doing BJU, adding it into your homeschool, and you're just thinking, how are we ever going to go on vacation if this course is meant to be done 180 days, which is five days a week, and I don't want to be doing this course for 18 months? Like, how do we make this work? Um, these little tips that I shared with you will really make a difference when it comes to completing your BJU courses. So I hope you guys enjoyed this little quick little tip video. Let me know if you found it helpful. Share any tips you have for using BJU Press Homeschool down below. I love it. Otherwise, we wouldn't use it. So don't let this be like a deterrent. Um, it's just you have to figure out how to manage all these different balls in the air, so to speak. And so these tips really help me. And I hope that they help you too. Thank you so much for watching. And I will see you guys again really soon. Bye, guys.